coming up on this episode of a dust the lead i'm not surprised when i enter a facebook group of over 2000 members and only about 100 of them are really engaging with the, the group now becoming more aware of your full invisible audience will really really make a lot of impact on your show inspiring actionable content that helps you get focused get started and be impactful this is the audacity to lead Hello, thank you for joining me again on this episode of Audacity to Lead. I am Dio Samuel and this is Audacity to Lead, the podcast dedicated to helping you magnetize, mesmerize and monetize your message and audience online. Today, I'll be sharing with you something very, very briefly. I'm going to be teaching you all speaking with you about your invisible audience now this is something i once shared with my closed group the members of nigeria podcast network and this has brought a couple a, a level of awareness to members of nigeria podcast network and i felt let me go ahead and share that with you today perhaps bring a little more depth and insight to this topic of your invisible audience I bet you probably didn't know that something like this existed. Well, you're about to discover it anyway. So if you're joining me on this podcast for the first time, I want to say thank you for being here. And if you've always been here, I want to say thank you again for joining me. And today, like I said, I'm sharing with you the concept of an invisible audience. Now, let me just cut right to the chase. So, you see you have a lot of views on your videos, whether on Facebook, on, on YouTube, or maybe even on Instagram. You have tons of downloads for your podcasts, a lot of traffic to your site. You have seen a lot of subscribers to your email list. But then, there has been no comments, so to say. No emails, no sales, no money made, no feedback, just nothing. Everything is just as silent as hell on a gloomy day and that is if hell is silent anyway (laughs) now the thing is your audience is broken into two there is the visible audience and there is the invisible audience most of the time the invisible group are the highest in fact it's said that about 20 percent of your audience maximum will be visible and active majority the 80 percent will be onlookers People will just be looking at what you do. They will just be observers. They won't participate. They won't actively engage with you. And so they remain completely invisible. Now, a major reason why we seem to overlook them is because they are completely invisible. Now, the more you are aware of your invisible audience, the better it is for you as a podcaster, a blogger, or a social media marketer now as a coach as a consultant as a speaker as a trainer this particular episode is going to bring you into some level of awareness into some level of enlightenment that thousands of other coaches thousands of other consultants are not aware of thousands of other personal brands may not even have come across this but you are privileged to be hearing it today and that's more reason why you should pay attention now I'm not surprised when I enter a Facebook group of over 2,000 members and only about 100 of them are really engaging with the group. Imagine Nigeria Podcast Network has over 1,300 members right now as I do this recording and about 100, so to say, of them maximum are actively engaging with the content that I share there every day, every time and even the content that others share. Now, Sometimes when I send emails asking for feedback to my email list to those subscribed to my email list at audacity.com and I ask for feedback, I actually just hold on. I know in of two, three days, people are going to respond. But in fact, I have a BlackBerry Messenger that has over 1,400 people on it who are not even on my email list, neither are they inside Nigeria podcast. And over time, I've seen that as one of 
the platforms that I use to dish out my content, particularly to broadcast my message to reach more people. So, most times when I send out messages like that, I discover that less than 10% of those 1,400 people actually respond. One day, I did something on behalf of my friend. I actually copied this. I actually wrote a message and broadcasted it to the 1,400 people I had on my BlackBerry Messenger then. And I, I discovered that within 24 hours, the guy had added close to 200 people to his BBM contact. Now, you know, put up on his PM that just one broadcast and he got over a hundred BBM requests. So, and I began to ask him, what kind of request did you get? He said, BBM, who are the kinds of people? So, he will tell me, this is the person, this is the person, this is this, this is that, this is this, this is that. And then I began to ask myself that, hold on, what is it that so far these people have not actively engaged with the content I share on BBM? They've just been silent, watching, reading, and following. But when I sent out a, a pin for them to add a friend of mine who's presently doing a training, all of them, most of them actually had their demo. So that brought me to a great awareness of this invisible audience. Now, this is quite different from what you hear public speakers say about imaginary audience, where you imagine and believe that multitudes of people are listening to you or watching you. Now, according to Wikipedia, imaginary audience is the state where you imagine you have an audience that are listening to you or watching you. And according to Wikipedia also, they said it's common with young adolescents, people who are just growing up or maybe people of any age who particularly have a fantasy of speaking to large crowds. Now, in 2014, Buffer App wrote a post titled Why Your Social Media Posts Are More Popular Than You Think Inside the Invisible Audience. Now, it was this 2014 that I became aware of what an invisible audience is. So from that time, I began to monitor, watch, and then give a little attention to what's going on behind or beyond the post that I write. There have been times that I even sent out a message and nobody really responded. But then it's also... Imagine, a few months ago, I advertised something and one of the first few persons to jump at that program then was actually somebody in my invisible audience and i was like oh so you're still here and she respond and she responded yes i've been here all this while just that what you said now really really hits me and i would like to step forward now when over 200 300 400 over 500 people actually listen to your show watch your video and maybe just two or three of them send you a message or they didn't even see anything. How does that make you feel? Now, being aware of my invisible audience, like I said, I discovered in 2014. And since then, it has helped me so far because since then, I've been able to actually put my mind at a point because it's a usual thing when somebody's just getting to start a podcast or getting to start a blog. And you are almost immediately expecting to receive a lot of feedback from all of the people reading your post or from all of the people listening to your podcast. And when you don't get that, how does that make you feel? Now, now I let me even share a story that happened to me back then when I was at paid employment. One day I was in the cubicle in my office then and then an email came in. I can't remember where the email came from. And then I opened the email and read the email. And while I was reading the email, the email suddenly became an inspiration to me because of the particular conditions surrounding me then. Now, I copied out a very simple line from that email. And then I posted, I posted it on my Facebook timeline as a quote. Two days later, and this was quite interesting, I was standing in front of my boss at the office. And guess what? The line I copied out 
is what he had on his screen. And he was asking me, who and what am I referring to? And what, what was my intention when I posted the quote? He quite understood that it was a quote, that I saw it somewhere, yes, but for that particular time, for that particular moment, and the circumstances surrounding the posting of that article, it was kind of too spectacular. So I apologized for that. And then he actually overlooked it and forgave me, but the damage was already done. I couldn't have imagined he would see it when I was posting it. I couldn't have even assumed it would remain, it would even mean something different to him. And since then, my awareness of the invisible audience became stronger. He didn't like, neither did he comment. So that made me to become more careful with the things. I do or say on my podcast. Now, a couple of months ago, I said something on my podcast and my relationship coach listened to that and she immediately told me that you go and pull down that thing that you just said. If that thing doesn't eventually come to pass, over... Almost everyone who listens to your podcast, at least you get a lot of people listening to your podcast. All of them would have heard that and you may not be able to come back and change that again. And let me even give you this scenario. It was like I had proposed something was going to happen. I had proposed something was going to happen. I was so sure that thing would happen at a particular time. But then force is beyond me, so to say. <laughs> made that not to happen and so eventually that thing didn't happen the way i planned it and i couldn't change that i couldn't change that circumstance i couldn't change anything around that and so when i did that podcast out of the excitement of that thing is going to happen and i went ahead and said that on the podcast and she just put, called my attention to it that she just pulled it down and I just humbled myself, pulled it down, and when that thing didn't happen, I just told myself, imagine if my relationship coach hadn't told me that I should pull it down, and I actually said it, and everybody had heard what I said, and that thing didn't actually happen. How would that make me feel? Now, same thing happened some months ago when I interviewed Victor Bassi on this podcast, and... A pastor, my pastor back then, called me up and said he actually really enjoyed that particular episode I did with Victor Bassi. And I was like, hmm. And I didn't know he was going to listen to it. Now, Sesu Kava, who, happened, who is my friend, used to say something. He says, whatever you do or don't do, someone's life is being changed. Now, becoming more aware of your visible, invisible audience will really, really make a lot of impact on your show, will really, really make a lot of impact on the blog post you write because, in fact, on Audacity to Lead right now, there's a particular blog post I have there that I wish I hadn't written simply because it went beyond what I expected it to go. And that was because I just neglected the idea of the invisible audience. Meanwhile, let me share with you some things you can do with your invisible audience, how to actually handle your invisible audience. Now, Stanford, Stanford and Facebook did a research, a study actually, taking account of 220,000 Facebook users. And they actually went ahead to ask them what they think what they perceive for the audience to be and they compare that with the actual details facebook has and they discover that their audience the audience people have is a particular number and their passive audience is actually an actual number and the original the real audience size is four times larger than that and now According to that same post that I said I found on Buffer app 
back then, there were three things that I could actually take away from that actually took away from that post, which has helped me so far since that time. And I want to share three of them with you. There are five that they mentioned, but only three of them actually applied to me. And the first is to keep a consistent schedule. Now, why is it important to keep a consistent schedule? It's because once you start posting, once you start sharing content at a particular time or at a particular frequency, your audience gets used to that. It is the reason why I could come out and say I want to change my podcast um, schedule to Monday or I want to return it back to Tuesday like I announced last week. So it is out of that. In fact, A.D. Cohen, who, who was... Who, is a genius as social media studies and all that advice is that you keep a consistent schedule and if you can't do that on your own use apps online tools like postcron like buffer app like if you are using wordpress you can use revive old post which is a plugin that you can actually install i hope i'll link I'll create a link for all of that in the show notes for this particular episode, which you can download at audacitytolid.com. Now, Eddie Cohen goes ahead and said that your invisible audience is much larger than you think, and they are keen to keep hearing from you. Now, that's number one way to actually engage them. Number two way to engage your invisible audience is to ask for participation in fact he said i should invite participation now what i started doing then is that i now began to put at the end of my blog post questions that will make somebody want to reply me in the sense that i'll go like okay over to you if you were to if you were to write a post right now and you really really can't figure out how many people of course you can see how many people who who read the post but you want to find out how many people actually actively engaged with the post. How do you do that? Now, asking such questions makes the reader to want to answer. Some, In fact, when I did this post the first time inside Nigeria Podcast Network, somebody commented and said that you actually got me to comment for the first time ever since I joined this group. And <laughs> that's as simple as that. Invite participation. It could be like you could ask for a tweet. You could put up a social media image or an image or a, or a blog post at the end of your blog post. Ask questions. Or maybe your post, your image could be a question inside of a quote. So you could do that. You invite participation. And then the third thing is for you to actually, according to that post, it says you should rely on accurate metrics. But for me, I'll say be aware of of vein metrics vein metrics are those metrics and i think i talked about that in the episode that i interviewed johnson okori where i talked about five step marketing system Vein metric is when you're focusing on fifty thousand reach and really there's no conversion there's nothing that is coming out of those fifty thousand reach the important stats that you should focus on should be things like engagement rate how you are growing over time, time people spend on the post, social shares, those are the things that you should focus on. Now, I hope this podcast has actually helped you to gain some insight into some things you may have actually been wondering about for a while. And I hope that this particular episode was useful to you. Whether it's useful, I would like to hear from you. You can leave me a comment on at audacitytolead.com but perhaps you would like to join my community the Nigeria Podcast Network I invite you to step forward and stop being an invisible audience <laughs> and just go over to audacitytolead.com slash npn and request to become a member I hope to see you next week when I come your way again, till then remember to get focused, get started and be impactful <laughs>